Today we're looking at Integrity's November XSS challenge. Let's get straight into it. So we are here on the main page that explains the rules and explains everything about the challenge, but we're instantly gonna head over to the challenge page right here. And this challenge page looks like this. It has a couple of buttons or information graphics about um, the OS top 10 of this year, of 2021, and you can read more and all of that kind of stuff. But the, really the only behavior here that we can control is this search bar. Here we can search for something such as security, and then it says you searched for security and then different things show up. Now instantly we can see that this security string that we entered is put on the page, it's reflected onto the page. So that obviously makes things already quite interesting. Now I'm gonna change this to, for example, pink integrity, then I'm gonna search, and then I'm just gonna go into inspect, and in inspect, I'm gonna do a control find for pink integrity. Now, pink integrity also occurs in the title, which is interesting. So in the title, it says you searched for, and then uh, pink integrity. But then it also occurs on this page here, this element that we found earlier. Now that's very interesting. Uh, let's see if we can just get the simplest XSS here. And that would obviously be through a script tag. So I'm gonna add a script tag, script with an alert uh, document dot domain. We're gonna close the script tag and let's see what happens. And well, this would have been a little too easy, I suppose, but why does, does this not work? Well, first of all, uh, on our page here, we see that nothing really happened here. Uh, and if we look at the network tab and we make that request again, then we can kind of track it down. And here we see a couple of things. We see uh, that there's a couple of scripts here, but let's scroll past all of that and let's see where our input gets put. And here it says you searched for V dash open curly braces search close curly braces. And that's very interesting. Why does it not have our input here? Because that means that our input actually gets put here on the client side. And if we scroll back up, we will see here that this is actually a view application or view is used in this application and it is then using view templates. So templating to put the correct value there. We see that the search value gets actually gets passed on to view uh, through the s get parameter. So that's how this search ends up there. Now, okay, we have something that we can inject in a template. Uh, are these templates in view not vulnerable to XSS? Well, no, because we can look at the security page for view and here they talk about HTML content. And they say, uh, if you're using a template like we are, here they have a user provided string in an H1, and this user provided string contains a script, then it would be escaped to the following. And um, this escaping is actually done by native browser APIs. So that means that a vulnerability can only exist if the browser is vulnerable. And in this case, we're using the latest version of Chrome or Firefox. And as far as I'm aware, they're not vulnerable or there's no public vulnerabilities for them. So yeah, that's not a good approach. However, let's also look at our uh, first reflection point, and that is this, this title uh, up here. How does that look in code? Well, here we don't have that template. So here it's literally just echoed in there. And um, yeah, we can see that this currently isn't working because we're currently not getting an, an alert, but that is probably because we are still in the title element. So what if I go back up to my URL and I just remove the title or I close the title element before my script tag, what will happen here? And now if I run that, we can see in our elements, in our head, that our title was properly cl closed and our script was um, put here, script alert document dot domain. However, that did not execute because we did not get an alert. What happened there? Well, if we go to our console, we see an error line and it says refused to execute inline scripts because it violates the following content security policy directive. So a CSP, a content security policy is coming in between of it. Uh, we see that it's not defined in the head. So that means it's probably a header that's passed on. So let's look at this request again, go to headers. And here we see the content security policy that says base your self, default source self, so this self means only from within the pages 
these pages itself. Then for the script source, which is what we're interested in, it says unsafe eval, which means that eval directives and, and that kind of stuff is allowed. Then it supplies a nonce, and a nonce means every script that gets included needs to have this uh, specific nonce value added as an attribute to the script tag, and this nonce value is then randomly created by the server, um, so only the server knows it at the time of creating the script tags. And we also have the strict dynamic directive, and it, this one we saw as well in our previous video, uh, in our previous challenge. And this means that if a script is allowed to run, so if it has this valid nonce and all that, if that creates a new script tag in the DOM, then that script is also allowed to run without having to have the nonce and all of that. And uh, that is really the main interesting thing here. We also have the style source, which supplies a SHA value, so it is hash, and only uh, if your whole style uh, HTML element uh, hashes to that specific hash supplied here, then uh, it's allowed to run, or in the case of style, it's allowed to style the page. So, okay, this content security policy is not really allowing a lot here. Uh, and that's a, that's a bummer. However, we're not done looking at this page yet, because we haven't yet looked at the scripts that we saw. We haven't yet d dug into them, and we're going to do that right now. So, first of all, we have this script here. And this script uh, says, is prot equals true. Okay, that, that's all. Then we have this script add JS, uh, this function add JS, which takes in a source and a callback. It's going to create a script element. So, okay, this element is going to be allowed to run the script element that's get created, because that's what the strict dynamic uh, directive in the content security policy said. But from that script tag, we're going to set a source that is defined here by this parameter, and then that's obviously going to run. Then we have our init view function, which uh, is going to run on, uh, or the view application is going to work on uh, an element that has the ID app, and it's going to have the, the delimiter of window.delimiters. Now earlier, in the beginning, where we looked at, at uh, this templating, we saw that that was v dash and then opening curly brace, opening curly brace it are the delimiters. Then we also have the data that it uses, so this is all the data to do with our uh, OS top, top 10 here. And okay, moving on here, we see this other script that is going to set the limiters to exactly what I just said, so v dash opening curly braces. And then it's going to add js uh, and then dot slash view js dot php. And if I look at that view js dot php, we see that that's literally just going to be the, uh, yeah, the view js code here for this specific version. Okay, so that's that. Then we have this whole other script here that is going to only work if the window is not set to prod, but up here the script said that the is prod is always going to be true, so we cannot even get into there right now, so uh, we'll just kind of not think of that for now. However, we now have seen that how this view uh, app works, and now we, you could say, well, what if we, we have an HTML injection, what if we add, uh, for example, a diff with ID app, and then we add a delimiter in there so that we can start our own template. Will things get filled in in that template? So uh, let's try that out. So after closing our title, I'm going to open a div, which is going to have an ID of app. We're going to then close that div as well. And in here, um, view should, view is going to um, do templating. And if we are now putting something in here, so we put a template in there. For example, let's just try to get the search back in here because we know that it exists. And, and if this would work, we could obviously go for an XSS or uh, more things here. Because if this works, then we would have a CSTI, a client side template injection. And if I run that, we see that that does not work. And here on the page, we see something strange. We see percentage sign, V percentage sign. Uh, that's weird. Let's look at what the server responded to us. And the response indeed has these percentage signs. So that's quite odd. What is blocking it here? Are we not allowed to use a, a dash? Um, but if we look at the dash, that works fine. Are we not allowed to use a V? No, that's, that's also fine. Are we not allowed to use V dash? It seems indeed that 
V dash is not allowed, a firewall is blocking us from using uh, V dash. So yeah, that's not really an approach. Uh, where do we go next? Well, time to find out in the next section of the video. So we've just explored the space of this challenge of what we need to look at. And right now we're kind of stuck. We've kind of explored it and we don't know where to go. However, uh, this is where a hint can come in handy. And the first hint uh, was released one day after the challenge. And the hint goes, sometimes you need to make your enemy stronger in order to be able to break it. That's just our policy. Now, what do we mean by that hint? First of all, we hear the word policy. Could this um, have to do with the content security policy, the CSP? Uh, and if so, we say you need to make our enemy stronger in order to break it. So we, we need to change the content security policy in some way. Can we do that? How do we change the CSP? Uh, well, that's a good question because currently the CSP comes from a header. We cannot control the header that comes from the server. However, content security policies, CSPs, can also um, be shown in the, in the head of your HTML. And we actually have an HTML injection in our head. So we could maybe supply a new content security policy. However, what happens if there are multiple CSPs? Well, in that case, the browser is gonna add them onto each other. So it's, you can only really make it stronger. You cannot remove things from the other one. You can only make the current one stronger. And that's what this says. It says, well, you need to make your enemy stronger in, the, in order to be able to break it. So how could making our content security policy stronger actually help us? Well, in this case, we have, for example, this script here, which sets the uh, delimiters to this. And we know that this is blocked, so we, we don't want to set those delimiters. So what if we make the content security policy stronger so that this script is not being executed? That way, the, the delimiters will just be the basic view delimiters, which is just curly braces, and those are not blocked. Um, so yeah, that's a really good idea. So let's see if we can try to put that uh, to the test and see how we can do that. So first of all, we have to generate our uh, content security policy, and that looks like this. So you have a meta tag with an HTTP dash equiv, set the content security policy, and then your content is going to be the values that you want, uh, yeah, the CSP that you want to set. So we can change the content security policy by setting these contents. And now, what do we want to change? Well, I want to set the script source because we're talking about scripts here. I want to change that to something. And um, the thing that we could do is we could change this to uh, only allow scripts with certain SHA values. So that's how much SHA, 256, and then dash a value like this. Now, if I were to input this, then all of the scripts would be blocked, but let's just make sure that that happens. Let's see, test this out, see that that happens. Um, so after we close the title tag, I'm just gonna input this CSP that we just created. And now if I go to the console, we see that all the scripts, these four scripts are all blocked. That's really good, because that's exactly what we want. But now we only want uh, one of these scripts to be blocked, and that is this third one, yeah, this is the third one, uh, which sets the delimiters. So let's allow the other ones. And in, in Chrome, this is very easy because Chrome tells you, hey, this is the hash you need to include if you want to include the script. So I'm just going to allow these ones. So go back here and allow specific values. So that's the first one. Then we have the, the third one we want to skip, the second one we want to include. Okay. We include the second one. And then lastly, we include the last one. And now what we should see, hopefully, is that all of these scripts are going to work except from, for the one we don't want to work. Okay, time to put that to the test. Can I get my cursor there? There, yes. And now I want to paste that in and run this. And okay, what do we see here? We see a lot of things. Um, we see a lot of errors here with invalid sources of very short strings. What could be going on here? And if we look at our SHA values, this one doesn't contain a plus, but this one contains two pluses. And of course, a plus in the URL is going to be interpreted as a space. So let's convert these to 2B, which is the HTML encoded version of a plus. Then do we have another plus? Yes, right here we have another plus. So that's again a percentage 2B. Now, if we try all of that again, 
Now we see that actually all the other scripts, they ran, except for the one that we didn't want to run. And um, yeah, that's great. Um, however, there's one issue with that. And the issue is that we see that, that the other script, the view script, wasn't included now. So the view application hasn't started. And you can see that up the top here, you searched for v-search. It didn't input our, our data there. So we removed these delimiters that are not allowed, but we also removed Vue.js from being ran here, and we need that. And that occurs here in the script that we just blocked with this add.js function. Uh, is there any other place where this add.js function is called? And if you double click on it, we can see that it lights up down here. So yes, here Vue.js or add.js is also being called with uh, input that we control. So that would be interesting if we could just call the Vue.js.php script from here, then we would also get Vue.js with the basic delimiters and we would be able to do a CSTI, a content a client side um, template injection. Okay. But in order to get here, we first need to bypass this window is not in prod um, check. And in the script up here, is prod is being set to true. However, we just saw that we can exclude scripts any way we want. So we can also just exclude this script. So let's just do that. Let's remove this first SHA from our CSP. Copy that to the end, remove all of that and just paste this one in. And in the console, we can see that two scripts are being blocked and that right now in our sources, we actually go, go into here and we execute this. Uh, it also console locked something here, a performance thing. And if you look here, that is this console log. So right now we just need to make sure that our version is above this big number. And then we are at our address line that we want. And the version seems to be controlled up here by a get parameter version. But it is, but the only the first 12 characters of our version are being taken. And this is, if I counted correctly, 13 characters. So we need to find a number that is shorter than this number, shorter than 12 characters. And that is um, bigger than, yeah, big, bigger than this number. So that's hard, right? So let's just take a look that we understand all of this correctly. Let's just try it out. So I'm going to set a version here to a number that's bigger. So with a one and then the end. And now if I run this and I look at my sources and I'm actually going to set a breakpoint here so we can see what the version is. So now if I reload, we can see that our version is just our number without our last character, which is not bigger than this. So we pass on to there. Uh, and that's not good. So in, in JavaScript, you need to think of a way where a string, because this number is a string, could result in being larger than this number while being shorter. And there are actually two ways that I'm aware of that can do this, because JavaScript allows a lot of weird things. And one of the things is the concept of infinity. Um, and infinity is actually just a string that we can pass on here. So if I set this version to be infinity, and if I execute this, now I'm going to set my breakpoint again so we can view that. Okay. Now the version says infinity as expected. And if I run through it, right now we go into our edgs function. So the string infinity is bigger than this very big number. Now that's the first approach that's possible. Another one that is a bit shorter would be to use uh, for example, one e and then forty, and this is this is one times ten to the fortieth. So this is a scientific notation, and if I use this and I set my breakpoint again and I reload the page, then we see that that is also going into this if. So that means that that number is also bigger than this big number was being shorter. So that's a really cool bypass for this version check. And now we are almost at the end because now we are in our address. Now we just have to set this view dev tool string to um, the view.js.php page there. Now this view dev tool string comes from the get parameter view dev tools and is then has, then has some sanitization or some replacing. Let's hope we don't have to bother with that because that looks kind of complicated to understand, right? Uh, so let's hope we don't have to bother with that and just set the um, view dev tools to view.js.php. All right, back in my URL here, let's put that there and say, well, view dev tools equals uh, view.js.php. 
And if I run that, we see here on the page that that still didn't work. We still have this view dash search here, this v dash search here. So yeah, that's a bummer uh, because this, if it worked, then this would have been interpreted as our search. And if we look in the console, we also see that this last error here, it says refuse to load the script, the, script, the Vue.js.php script, because it violates the following content security policy. And well, yeah, it, obviously it does, because in our content security policy that we created here, only scripts with this SHA are allowed and with this SHA. So we actually, the previous uh, CSP allowed this, but we limited it a bit too much. So we have to open it back up by adding a strict dynamic to it, which is gonna allow that to run. And then let's also just add the unsafe eval that we saw in the other one, just to be sure that everything works and that we don't limit it too much. So now if I paste this in there, we see that, hey, our de view dev tools works and we see that we get some output here. And now we can finally try to go for our uh, client site uh, template injection. Um, so let's try that out. So we knew that we had to make a diff with the ID being app. Uh, we're then gonna oh, close that diff here. And in that diff, we are gonna put a uh, template injection so we can try like seven times seven will that become 49 not in this case uh, maybe because we put this in front of our uh, csp here does that matter let's try it out in a different way and yes we need to put it behind it and now we see that 49 is displayed on a screen whereas we input seven times seven so this was evaluated uh, and that's really cool so now we're pretty much done, but in the last section of the video, we are going to see if we can go from this client side template injection to an actual XSS. And now we are ready for that last step, getting this CSTI to an XSS. And um, obviously you could go look in, in Vue.js yourself for uh, things that could help you get this, but other people that are very smart have already done this. And uh, in Hectrix here, a, a really nice um, kind of git book where you can get information and, and, and cheat sheets and methodologies for a lot of things. They have this page on CSTIs, client sites, template injections, and they also talk about Vue.js here. Now, okay, they have different um, gadgets here, uh, one for version three, one for version two, and earlier we saw that our Vue.js is version two. So I'm just gonna copy this payload and I'm gonna go into the URL here and paste it in at the end. I'm going to change this alert uh, one to alert document.domain. And if we run that, we see that we actually get our pop-up and that is how we solved this challenge. That was it for today's video. If you got the chance to try this challenge, let us know down in the comments where you got stuck. Uh, if you haven't tried this challenge, this challenge and all the previous ones are still up and running. So uh, visit the links and follow them. Go to, those, to this challenge and try to complete it on your own. On top of that, follow us on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube and like the video if you liked it. And then I hope to see you hacking the next XSS challenge of December. So take care and see you then.